So before we begin, let's let's do a quick prayer. Mm-hmm. Family, Father, we thank you for having us this afternoon. Now as we learn about the vaccine, we ask you to inform us and shed light on the issue. We bless you, Lord, that as we go forward, you protect us from this virus, protect us from anything that this vaccine may harm us, and please continue to bless this church. Please bring us back together in person in 2021. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So just a a quick recap of this morning. Um, I'm going to share my slides. Um, The most important issue facing our church is how do we get back to in-person? How do we get back to singing and listening to worship? Um, socializing, eating food together, spending time in our church building that we spent a lot of time to pay off. How do we get back to in-person church? Um, and really that's the, the way to that is to get herd immunity. And that means getting vaccinated. Um, just to remind everybody that we talked about this this morning, but the general conference has given a specific position on the vaccine. The general conference has talked about it. They talked about the mark of the beast. They talked about the vaccine. They talked about um the government supposedly trying to control people they talked all this we're going to read some of what they said so that everybody can understand what the church officially believes um and so we also will talk about the history of vaccination certain people talk about tuskegee um the syphilis experiment in america some people talk about vaccination um clinical trials in africa we will talk about that we'll talk about the history of vaccination in ghana we will talk about Diseases that have been eradicated, for example, smallpox. Smallpox doesn't exist anymore. No one in the world gets smallpox. Um, we'll talk about COVID-19 um, as a community. What does it mean and what is our risk? If we have 2,000 people go to camp meeting and one in 500 Black people are dying from COVID-19, that means about four people who go to camp meeting would die from COVID-19. So we can expect four people to have died um, for um, when they go to camp meeting for our NAGSA events. And so we have to think about how this issue affects us. And in our church, we have about 250 members. And so it could be likely that one of us dies from COVID-19. And we hope that this is not the case. Um, If we, the health department, uh, do everything that we can to inform people, no one should really be dying of COVID-19 in 2021. We talked about the biology of the virus, um, how the virus has the spike protein. You can see these little triangles on the virus and how that it uses it to enter the body. And then once it's in the body, it replicates and, and basically pops the cell. We talked about how the, uh, the vaccine is made. The vaccine is basically mRNA. You'll hear a lot of the RNA is made from DNA. Um, we have RNA in our body all the time and RNA are instructions for the body to make protein. What is protein? Protein is the muscles in your body. Protein is the blood in your body. Protein Um, is what your brain is made out of. Protein is what your basically your body's made of. Your body is basically protein, sugar, and water, and fat. And so how does, so we basically are given instruction for the body to make the specific protein, this case, an antibody against the spike protein, which is on the coronavirus, as you see over here. And that antibody blocks the coronavirus from entering the cell, giving us immunity. So basically we stop this replication or uh, the growth of the virus within the cell. We also talked about clinical trials. How do we know things work? That's the thing about medicine. Anytime you get a medicine in America, the FDA has to do a clinical trial. This is not um, supplements that you get from the store. This is not herbal ingredients. This is a medicine that's just prescribed by a doctor or a nurse practitioner. And so if you get these medicines, they have a clinical trial to show that they actually are safe and effective. And so we have phase one, which is only a couple of people. We have phase two, um, which is about a couple hundred people. And then we have phase three, which is tens of thousands of people for vaccines. The average vaccine trial, they have 27,000 people. The Pfizer trial, they had 44,000 people. The Moderna trial, they had 35,000 people. They also went above and beyond. So we can talk about how this trial is actually better than most trials. And we can also talk about the results and why they are approved. It is 95% effective. All patients who were vaccinated did not um, go to uh, the hospital when they were infected with COVID. So that means when we think about COVID, we talk about COVID, right? Which is coronavirus um, infection, infectious disease, right? Or basically COVID is the disease that you get from having the SARS-CoV-2 or the virus, the coronavirus that causes the disease. And so none of the patients who were infected with coronavirus after receiving the vaccine got sick. 
That is a major finding. And 95% of the patients didn't even have symptoms. And so this vaccine is so powerful that there's only one vaccine in history that's actually more effective. And that's the hepatitis A vaccine that we give to children who are one and above. And so that's the kind of standard. That's why so many doctors are very excited about this, this vaccine is because it's very effective and even more so it's even safe. There are no major side effects and there are no death. And the people who have side effects, we'll talk about this, their allergic reactions, that in the hospital can be very treat, treated easily. All you need is an epinephrine shot or some uh, monitor and they can treat that very simple um, in the emergency room or even in the primary care office. The vaccine side effects. Here's a picture of Sarah, right? Sarah's right by next to me. She's alive and well. She received her Pfizer vaccine last Thursday um, and she is a third year resident. She does C-sections on COVID positive women. So she gets to see a lot of positive patients all the time who have coronavirus. She is now at 50% um, protectiveness. And then when she gets her second vaccine in about a week and a half, she will be at 95% uh, protection. And so everybody, who's a, everybody who is a healthcare practitioner, a lot of them are leading by example, right? We're not giving you something that we wouldn't take ourselves. And what did she feel when she got it? Well, Sarah, she can tell you, she can tell you if you guys want. Um, when she got the uh, injection, she felt a little soreness in her arm, but it was gone in like what, a day or, or so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was gone the next day. She had no headache. She didn't have a fever. She didn't have a fatigue. She didn't have chills. She, hasn't, she didn't even have muscle pain. Some people even get it and feel nothing, right? More, about half people will feel nothing, right? And if you do feel something, it's gone within 24 to 48 hours. That's just your body having an immune response. So your immune system always responds to any time it gets sick with a virus or cold or something different by raising the temperature in your body to, allow, to let you know that you're sick. Anybody who's a nurse knows that when a patient gets a fever, we're thinking infection, right? And so we were trying to look at what is the cause of infection. So the fever is just a natural response to the body. The fatigue is a natural response to the body because the body is releasing these chemicals to tell you, the, these natural chemicals, right, that are inside the body to tell you that you are sick, right? And so that's the immune response working. So when you get sick, we know it, it might, your, your immune system is working for this, this vaccine. And if you don't get sick, that doesn't mean that it's not working. It's probably working. It's 95% effective. And so these are just the symptoms of uh, the, the vaccine and the immune system responding to it. So we talked about who should vaccinate. Um, people who are overweight and obese, people with diabetes. Diabetes, a lot of people don't know, actually weakens your immune system. So they're at increased risk, even more than people who have hypertension for um, COVID-related death. There's people who have hypertension, uh, people who have heart disease, cancer, and age. They're all risk factors. The biggest risk factor being age. Somebody who is over the age of 75 has a thousand times the risk of dying from COVID at something between 18 and, and, and 30. That is a massive, massive increase in risk. So if you are very old, you should be the one that should be getting vaccinated. And in this study, they actually studied the vaccine in people all the way up to 90. And even people right now over 90 are getting the vaccine. It was very safe in them. And in fact, from this study, the people who are actually older have less of the side effects that I talked about, the, he the soreness, the headache, the fever, the fatigue, just because their immune system is a little bit weakened after time. And so it doesn't have as strong an effect. When you're younger, you're more likely to feel that fatigue and that fever, right? It's kind of like getting the flu um, shot. And we talked about who shouldn't get it or who's not allowed to get it. Now, Sarah corrected me this morning. She said that um, her society, the OBGYNs, they actually are actually recommending people get it. It hasn't been studied in it. So the, the, uh, the trial didn't study it in pregnant women, but they believe it's gonna be safe enough for pregnant women. Um, but that's a conversation you should have with your doctor. Right now, it's only currently approved for people who are 16 and above. The people who are 16 to 18 could actually get the, um, the Pfizer vaccine. The people who are 18 and older can get the Moderna vaccine. Um, and we should be able to have these vaccines by the spring. So March, April, um, you should start your local doctor, your local hospitals, um, local vaccination programs should start getting it. Um, people who are healthcare workers and people who are home care workers, CNAs, home health aides, they definitely should be getting vaccinated. Why? To protect yourself. And if you infect somebody who's very old, remember we said someone who's 75 and above has almost a thousand times more risk of dying from coronavirus. Um, in fact, it gets up to 20%, 25% if they get infected 
uh, which is very high in medicine, of dying from coronavirus. It's very deadly to old people. So if you work with old people, which many of the people in the church do, you should definitely get vaccinated because you're putting a lot of people at risk. Um, and even if you had COVID, because actually they've done studies and they found that 33% of the Bronx does have antibodies for COVID-19, which means 33% of the Bronx has already been infected and cleared the virus. Many of you have probably been infected and cleared the virus without even knowing. Um, you still are encouraged to get the vaccine. Why? Because the vaccine boosts your immunity, right? Because over time, those, those antibodies, they drop a little bit. They get a little bit weaker, right? Your body doesn't gets less familiar with the virus. And so you get the vaccine, it boosts your, anti your antibodies. So even if you had COVID-19, you are encouraged to get it. It doesn't make you more sick. They studied it in almost 1,000 patients, 10,000 patients. They know that it boosts your immunity if you already had COVID-19. Um, and to open safely, the church will need to actually have 70 to 90% of our members, right? If we want to imagine a day where we can sing without mass, which could be next year, right? No mass, normal gathering, full 250 people, even guests, packed church like pews, like, you know, like we used to have, packed um, lunchroom, everything. We need to get 70 to 90% of the church vaccinated, all right? And this is very possible. I want to say this too. You will not pay for the vaccine. The U.S. government has already purchased the vaccine. Why? Because everybody's like, oh, the U.S. government is trying to kill everybody. The U.S. government is trying to, no. They want you to go back to work. They want you to live life, right? That is beneficial for the economy, right? People dying and people going to an ICU. We talked about the ICU care, right? This person in the ICU, an ICU stay costs twenty dollars to $30,000 per day. Who's paying for that? Most people's insurance are not paying for that. It's the government that's paying for that. So there's a financial incentive for all the business people, right, to actually make sure that the people do not get fully sick because that is an extreme pressure on society. And remember, I said this morning, COVID-19 is the third leading cause of death in the United States, right? And expected to reach 600,000 by April. So if we reach 600,000 by April, right, which is where, this is how many uh, people die to heart disease or um, heart disease or cancer, that means COVID would be the leading cause of death in the United States. Even with all this uh, lockdowns and masking and social distancing, that is the leading cause of death in the United States. That is very deadly. And so the government has incentive to make sure everyone is vaccinated to be safe, not because they want to kill you. And we'll also talk about, oh, does the government actually like to to track you, right? We'll talk about that because a lot of people believe that this is the, you know, that they're injecting um, this micro technology into you, a microchip into you so that they can track you. There's no need for that. The government can track you in many different ways. They have their phone, they have social media. We can go into that. They have lots of data for that. Medicines are not the way. And, and there are a lot of things that we can do in medicine and there are a lot of things that we cannot do. We do not have nanotechnology. We'll talk about the myths um, in a short time. Um, and so um, I think we should, this is a good segue to talk about the vaccine fears because there are a lot of things that we've seen. Pit people sent me videos of this nurse who, um, who actually passed out. She's a nurse manager in um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. She was vaccinated live on TV. And then after 15 minutes, after receiving the vaccine, she passed out. So everybody's like, oh, okay. It must be the vaccine. That is not true. It came out, she actually went back on campus and said she passes out all the time. In medicine, we actually have this thing called vasovagal syndrome where you have, because you get a little bit nervous, you tend to pass out, right? Or maybe you're holding your breath or you get scared. She, she's afraid of pain, right? So she's afraid of needles. And so when she got it, she was a little bit nervous, more anxious and she passes out, right? If you pass out and you go to the emergency room, they try to rule everything out and then it might be vasovagal. It's very common, right? So a young healthy woman passing out after being on TV, after having a lot of anxiety, after getting a shot, you know, it, it seems like the vaccine is, but the vaccine literally cannot do that, right? They tested on tens of thousands of people. In fact, even millions of people have been vaccinated to this point. It doesn't cause that. They have, she, and she's come forth to say she's fine, she's back at work, and she's not dead. That is fake. That is fake news. The second one, Dr. Um, Carrie Maggi. She was on WhatsApp. A lot of people have said in the WhatsApp groups um, in, in the church text about this, this video showing the luciferase, right? Lucifer ace, right? So they're trying to imply that it's Lucifer who is uh, making this, this glowing thing so the government can track you. That is patently false. How do I know that? Luciferase is not from what we think it is. Luciferase is actually from fireflies, right? You see those bugs that um, they shine bright in the dark. That is the enzyme that actually causes them to show light. 
and it's just called Luce because Luce is a Latin word for light, right? Remember, Lucifer was the, the angel of light. And so that's kind of where the Lucifer, so they're using Latin words. Anytime you name something in biology or in medicine, you use Latin roots. And so that's where it was. And Luciferase has been used in the lab a long time. I've heard of Luciferase. We use it in the lab. It's, it's something I've been using since college. It's not new to this thing. And they were not, and more so it's not in the vaccine. I'll say it again. It's not in the vaccine. What is in the vaccine? It's salt, right? Because your, your blood is salty, so it needs to stabilize it. There's sugar. There's fat, so it can get into the cell, and then there's the RNA. That's it, right? It's so pure of a substance. That's why they have to freeze it at incredibly frozen temperatures. So they have to freeze it at like negative 90 plus so that it makes sure that it's stable because it's so frozen that it has no preservatives. It's, it's such a pure substance. Um, and then the last one is, is Bill Gates behind this, right? Bill Gates is famous for doing a TED Talk, right? Bill Gates said, Bill Gates said, um, Oh, in 2015, Bill Gates discussed a possible pandemic where we don't have a very deadly disease like Ebola. We don't have a very deadly disease um, like other outbreaks, right? Like SARS, right? Which was killing up to 10% of people, right? We have a, a, a very a virus that's kind of deadly, but is asymptomatic in many people. So it spreads throughout the world. And he said this after he made the talk after the Ebola outbreak. Bill Gates, he does a lot of work funding a lot of public health programs. And so he's been thinking about this. And then people, he made this speech, right, saying, oh, he, he thought this pandemic is possible and we were not prepared, right? He was trying to get people to prepare for it. People saw that video like, oh, Bill Gates predicted this. Bill Gates was getting ready for it. United States has already used to do pandemic readiness, right? Just like they get ready for war, they used to get ready for pandemics, right? Pandemics are not something new to the world, right? We have pandemics all the time. The HIV was a pandemic, right? HIV is different because HIV kills you over decades, right? Or over years and not over um, days. So Bill Gates was preparing for that. And there's actually even movies, if you can all watch the movie Contagion, where they actually show in the movie a virus coming out of China that spreads around the world, right? It's not something that's new to the, it's not something that's new to the public health community. This is a scenario they already predicted because they knew because that we interact with a lot of these bats and a lot of these animals in the wild, right? We eat these things that there has this thing called xenotransmission where basically it comes from animals to man, new viruses emerge from our wild, right? And so, we know that even pandemics in the future are even more likely because as we interact with nature, as we eat more uh, unclean meat, as we do all these crazy things with animals, they give us our they they give us our their viruses, and those viruses start to kill us. That's how, how the swine flu happened. That's how the bird flu happened. A lot of these viruses come from animals, right? Ebola is from a Ebola is from a bat, right? And so they know that these places are likely for the outbreak to happen. And so in the movie, you can all watch it. It's called Contag the Contagion. It was made in 2012. The movie starts off with somebody um, getting sick um, in China and then it passes throughout the world. But why? Because that happened in the SARS epidemic. And so that is how a lot of outbreaks do happen. It happens in China because the Chinese people have a history of eating some more exotic meats, right? But that's not just Chinese, right? It happens also in, in Africa and different places around the world. And so we know for a fact that a lot of pandemics start in animals, right? Bats in particular have a very strong immune system and they do not have tumors. So bats actually carry a lot of viruses within them. And so when they get to humans, because they're also mammals, um, they can cause illness. Okay, so the first myth we'll discuss, we'll open the floor up to discuss is mRNA vaccines cause cancer by damaging your DNA. What do people think, true or false? Anybody out there, true or false? Okay. It's false. It's it's false. false. It's the chat box if you think. Some people say false, some people true. Okay, so I'll explain because in terms of time. So we're all scientists. Science, it seems hard, but if you understand the basic concepts, very easy. Think of the cell like an egg, right? Every, in your body you have, um, maybe a hundred trillion cells, it's very small, right? A cell, a cell is like an egg, right? The yolk, you know, the yellow part is the nucleus. That's where the DNA is held. The mRNA that gets injected into your cells, they can never go into a nucleus. Why? Because the nucleus has a filtration system to prevent the mRNA to go into DNA. So it's impossible for the mRNA vaccines to actually get into the cells, right? And even more so, Anybody who actually worked in the lab knows that RNA degrades rapidly, 
And so if you have RNA in your body, natural RNA will grade within five minutes. This modified RNA, that's why it's called Moderna, modified RNA. Um, it's a little bit more stable so that you, it can actually make something happen. That degrades within hours. So when they actually give you the vaccine, your body clears it within uh, minutes to hours. And so that is false. It cannot get into the DNA, which is in the yolk or the nucleus of your, your cells. So that is impossible. People keep saying that it's very impossible for mRNA to cause damage to your DNA. The next thing, um, mRNA technology is brand new, right? Everybody says, oh, Trump made this Trump technology. That's, that's the idea, Trump made this technology. That is not true, that is not true. This technology has been made for, um, has it been in the works? Been researched for over 30 years, right? They started doing research at, um, um, at, the, at University of Pennsylvania and they did it at Harvard. They did it at many institutions, MIT, a lot of institutions around the world, the NIH, everybody worked together to make this technology um, possible. As soon as they, in general, as soon as they actually said, okay, this, this um, disease that's in Chinese people is being caused by coronavirus. They wanted to isolate the virus, see what it is. And then as soon as they isolated, they wanted to study it. They found that the, the remember the spike protein that we talked about before? They soon they found that the spike protein was the problem. They used the mRNA to make the spike protein in the cell and then they, they took off from there. And so they made sure to actually work together because the US government and, and you know and, and universities, they do science research all the time. They study every single thing, right? It's not just diseases that are affecting people. They just study viruses just to understand how they are, right? And so we already knew a lot about coronavirus. Why? Because coronavirus caused the common cold. Uh, and we knew about RNA viruses. Why? Because Ebola is an RNA virus. And so we had a lot of know-how. We had a lot of technology. And even more so, Moderna, I actually used to work across the hall from them. One of my professors is actually a founder of Moderna, right? He didn't find it to actually use it in vaccines. He found it to um, change cells, right? And so then they said, okay, well, maybe we can apply it to other things. And so Moderna is actually one of the, the, um, the biggest um, companies in biotech, right? Biotech, you have tech, you have Google and Facebook, but you have biotech, which is like pharmaceutical companies and, and, and companies that make drugs. And they are actually raising a lot of money to do this research way before the pandemic. And you know, I, I saw it across from my hallway. Um, they've been doing a lot of work. And so they weren't just, it's not like, it's not like the situation where they caused a pandemic and then they, they, then they made uh, the vaccine. No, they were ready because they had had a lot of research and a lot of work done. And then they used their know-how and they prioritized a lot of the US government's money and made it a, a goal to try to get a vaccine as soon as possible. If there's enough pressure and enough money, a lot of problems can be solved. So the vaccine was rushed. I think that's a lot of people's fear, right? Trump was president, Trump did not care about social distancing and, and treating the epidemic. So Trump's idea to get out of this pandemic was to rush a vaccine. Um, and so people think, oh, there's so much political influence and so much political pressure that this vaccine is rushed. That is false. First, Pfizer, when they were making the vaccine, they did not take any money from the US government because they saw that the election was coming. They said, okay, we do not want to take money to run the trials from you. We will take your money if you want to buy the vaccine. So the mm -hmm. Pfizer made the contract with the US government saying, hey, if you want our, if you want our um, vaccine, we'll buy from you. Moderna, the other vaccine, Moderna said, okay, we already had made the, we already made the technology, we already researched it, but we need the money to run clinical trials. When you do a clinical trial, a lot of doctors see you, right? A lot of people, they run a lot of tests on you, a lot of blood work, a lot of imaging, a lot of, a lot of money goes into each single patient. And so once uh, Moderna took the money from the government, they said, we need money to run clinical trials. In America, 90% of clinical trials fail, right? So 90% of drugs, candidate drugs, go into clinical trials and 90% of them fail. It's very risky. And when they fail, it costs a billion dollars. So for every new drug that you can think about, a $10 billion was actually invested to every new drug that made it to market. It's very expensive and it was, and it was not rushed. And even more so, the government actually said, okay, we'll take the money and we'll start manufacturing. And they took the risk because they said, if we start manufacturing now, it might work or it might not work, right? But we can't wait for it to be approved and then we start manufacturing because that could take months and that will delay uh, and cause a lot more death. And then we talked about it before, the vaccine um, has luciferase. And, the, and then we, I think something we need to discuss is the mark of the beast. And I wanna show the official Seventh-day Adventist um, guidance because I think a lot of you think that this is a sign of the end time or they think that this is uh, microchips being implanted. 
But the church itself, the general conference located in Silver Spring, Silver Spring is actually right by the NIH, right? So you can go to, for where I live, I can go 20 minute drive and I could be in Silver Spring. They actually discussed this and they, they officially released a press statement on December 18th, 2020. And so I'll read some of it to you. And I think it's they, what they said was very important. So we hope that this article, and you can see it on my screen. Oh, you can't see this on my screen? How do I, how do I share this? Yeah, maybe uh, you, you, you can see it, but you okay. didn't talk about um, the other virus that okay. you know, happened. Let me to... just share this. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, as you can see here, this is the Seven Day Adventist General Conference official remarks. Anybody can go read it, can Google it General Conference COVID vaccine, right? This is what they officially wanted to say on it because there's a lot of concern within the church. The church has well over 16 million members and so they need to take an official position on it. They said, we hope that this um, article will answer questions, I'll highlight it here, allay fears and resolve some of the prevalent myths and rumors, thereby bringing peace to the hearts of our members as they make health decisions guided by their healthcare providers. There are rumors and conspiracy theories that use the COVID-19 vaccine as an interpretation and fulfillment of prophecy. We asked the General Conference Biblical Research Institute for comments in this regard, and the response is as follows. So the Biblical Research Institute, all the doctors in, in, in theology and um, have co commented on this. The global upheaval caused by the COVID-19 pandemic has generated considerable speculation related to end time events and misinterpretations of the Bible. Let me highlight that misinterpretations of the Bible. One of the recent views propagated through social media and some internet websites has put forward the theory that the upcoming vaccine produced to combat COVID-19 belong to a process of control, we can talk about the government tracking you, that will lead to the application of the mark of the beast. It should be noted, however, that Adventists hold to the conviction that an end time controversy will center on the law of God and particularly on the fourth commandment, Revelation 14, um, tw uh, verse 12. Moreover, the third angel's message will warn against the reception of the mark and will enlighten humankind as to issues involved. For this reason, and listen closely, it should be made that Seventh-day Adventists understand the mark of the beast to not be a literal mark but a sign of allegiance that identifies the bearer as the loyal to the power represented by the beast. From a distinct perspective, another speculative view argues that the vaccine makes those who take them unclean because supposedly unclean substances are used to produce them. In this regard, it should be clarified that the abiding biblical instruction forbidding the consumption of unclean food and blood do not apply to vaccines for the obvious reason that vaccines are produced as medications to save lives, not to serve as food. Speculation as such bring the word of God into dispute and create and cause confusion among sincere but less informed believers. Using the introduction of a vaccine to stir up an eschological scenario of spiritual and cosmic proportions or to oppose it on the basis of faulty interpretation of the, of the scripture only distracts sincere believers from the real prophetic issues and the seven day and the, and the Adventist church commitment to proclaim the gospel. Hopefully an effective vaccine will help bring the current pandemic to a halt. It's very clear as they right there. This will protect the lives of those who still need to know about the gospel as well as those who have already accepted the gospel and are thus charged with the proclamation of God's infinite love to a suffering world. The Adventist Health Ministry is based on the Bible, the instruction of the spirit of prophecy through Ellen White and is consonant with peer reviewed evidence-based health science. We rely on these foundations in formulating health approaches and, and advice. With millions infected and many dead and global infections on the increase, a number of vaccines have been developed in record time. There are numerous questions people are asking regarding COVID-19 vaccine. As a church, while we support evidence-based public health recommendations, we also careful not to make pronouncements that may be construed as replacing national and international public health guidelines. For this reason, it is important for our comments to be understood within the framework of our official church position on immunization. 
And I like this part right here. The Seventh-day Adventist Church places strong emphasis on health and well-being. The Adventist health emphasis is based on biblical revelation that the inspired writing of Ellen G. White, co-founder of the church, and on peer-reviewed scientific literature. As such, we encourage responsible immunization, vaccination, and have no religious or faith-based reasons not to encourage our adherents to responsibly participate in protective and preventive immunization programs. We value the uh, health and safety of the population, which includes maintenance of herd immunity. The, the church also goes on to comment that Ellen G. White herself um, was vaccinated for um, smallpox. And so it's not like, and we discussed smallpox in our presentation, it's not like these things um, are something that is new to the church, right? So there's a history there. Ellen G. White believed in, her, in vaccination herself. And so we can't be saying that, oh, vaccination is just something that is Western or something that is non-Christian. It's very in line with the Adventist health message. And so with that, I, I, I've, I've said my piece and I'll let people ask as many questions as they want. Yeah, David, am I, am I on? Did you hear me, please? So are there any questions? Feel free yeah, to ask. Yeah, so we no can hear you. Yeah. Um, um, too big or small. Yeah, oh, Sarah wants to make a comment too. Mania Jesse or Chirichirimu. Effa. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, ah, I'm Sarah Pepper, for all of you who don't know me. I'm a third year OBGYN resident. Um, the reason why I also wanted to come um, and speak out is because I know people had some questions, particularly about the safety in pregnancy. Um, and David correctly pointed out that although these studies weren't done in pregnancy um, and pregnant patients for the obvious reason being that um, pregnant patients tend to be a special population in which they, it's very hard to do a trial that includes them in. And so you, because of science, you can't adequately or um, scientifically study something in a patient population and extrapolate it to a patient population that hadn't been studied. However, I wanted to go into the underpinnings of why our maternal and fetal medicine society, that's the society that deals with high risk um, pregnancy and issues pertaining to and dealing with pregnancy, why they actually do stand behind vaccinating pregnant women, as well as women who are lactating. The underlying um, scientific pinning is this, mRNA, is a is a, a strand of the uh, sorry is a strand of protein that is rapidly degradable, and the basis of which is that it does not enter into the cell nucleus. The cell nucleus is where the DNA is located, and so people have fear that um, that the mRNA could actually cause um, mut mutations in the baby. That's really what they're concerned would be. However, that is not the case. The first being that the mRNA is something that degrades rapidly. And the second reason being it's an, it cannot integrate into your cells um, genetic information and pass down and replicate it into your future offspring. So for that reason, it is not a mutagen, which is something that can cause abnormal uh, an abnormal um, embryo, an abnormal fetus. So that is reason number one. It's safe in pregnancy, theoretically, but they can't say it officially because they can't test it in pregnant women. But in light of this evidence, they still support it to be given in women. Number two, if you'll note, um, the CDC itself has even made mention that pregnancy in of itself is a risk factor for severe COVID pneumonia. I myself have been witness to many patients who've come in and needed, um, you know, respiratory support with oxygen. Unfortunately, there is a rare case where they do need the ICU, where they're placed on ECMO, which is a fancy term for saying that your lungs have completely shut down to the point that you need to be placed on a machine. This is a huge machine that's outside of your body to oxygenate your body and return it to you because your lungs are completely shot. Um, once you get to that level, it's very hard for you to recover, but thank God that there are people who still recover. But because of the gravity of COVID pneumonia and pregnancy, when you are pregnant, you're at a higher risk of suffering those severe consequences. And I have seen it. Strokes, amputations of toes because you have um, coagulation at your distal extremities to the point that it's um, ischemic and it falls off. 
all of that I've seen it in pregnant patients. So COVID pneumonia is a serious disease and the risk of the disease outweighs the theoretical risk of the vaccine. And the third reason um, is we have also noted an increased risk of preterm delivery as well as in intrauterine fetal demises. What that means is death of the fetus pregnant in the setting of COVID. So even if you didn't have the COVID pneumonia, the full bone COVID disease, pregnant patients have an increased risk of miscarrying because of the fact that even though we don't truly understand COVID, the way it works, there is speculation that because it causes you to throw blood clots, it can cause you to throw a blood clot in the pregnancy uh -huh. and end that pregnancy. So all of these risks are the reason why COVID pneumonia is such a riskier um, disease that when you compare it to the theoretical risk of the vaccine, it's much less. And so, of course, everything is an individual decision with you and your doctor, but I just want you to know that at least here in the US that our Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine and OBGYN support pregnant patients getting the vaccine. Thank you. David, I have a question. Can you hear me? David, can you hear me? I have a question. Oh. Yeah, I'm Pacho Dr. Prasunye. I'm so I am for the vaccine, don't you? Because I am very biased. But one thing I know, so my patients, I'm sure all of them, the idea we were black Americans, black, black Americans, they were more for generations. And I'm all African Americans, they said, me, and they, you know, I'm a free gun, and I'm Nigeria, bye. And mm -hmm. I feel what Jamaica for a uh, three different groups. Then they say, Um, who be a wicked Macas away in Nigeria, and you wicked Macas away Jamaica, and you Babacas or no, 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 be a BC. But be a more me different, and they say, Um, attitude towards vaccination, a one of the things I wish him the account. Within the Jamaica, and you be Jahan, I'll be some Macas more likely, be a one year vaccine. Would the gun and you be Jahua meaning, but more likely, Macas be a obedi. Uh, with the black American, if you know, I mean, to me, I saw so Vegia and I saw any, but the American is a Jamaican city and crophobia. Who some more than pa among people groups are making Jamaicans, uh, black Americans, any African Americans from West Africa and Asia African or mono de or mono in your vaccination. A year Jamaicans or more back clinic. If you cry with the sister, you cry no one the vaccination card. I check out and say, You want to see, you want to see, you want to see. Black Americans, so bad, almost do the vaccination card about me, so on, see, you want to see, you want to see. Most of us, if we have a family age group, if you have upper 50s, air cut down, you would do not be any vaccinated because they've been here. It's here, and you cry, and I say, You will move here. If you are a team and a one year warm, into vaccination, be any two teams. So we are even so on your scientist, cry now on your doctor. We have clear differences. All more money of vaccination, no. Aye, Jamaicans, no. I'm holding, holding, holding. Now they are born, so I'm diet, no. So aye, and you're too rich, and you're too fat. It is a black Americans, no. We say blacks, no. They cheese, mug, a brand new bread. We say it's a black, a typical black American, no. What? I'm so holding. They are bad. I'm on to Jamaica for. Is it Jamaica for? They only have a little better diet. Out of Sibi, I know many be brain than a crew have for a black Americans and a year Africans in the year, yeah, not diet, you know, and the answer, yeah, vaccination, it would, yeah, who are then and two almost which me who Jamaica need by where did be a bear be a sixty, but what or two hour because we did be a forty. It's the other than I made a coffee on in arm because say, only in your vaccination, yeah, no. The me and Kuru will be answered. May come by us, Maka. Some of the manager who said, Escafon will be brief. It's seventy five thousand dollars. Say, be a bow or monte. Medoka or yet Fox News a run. On the same car, one yet essential be beer, but one one idea. What it in Crofon be brief. And Tiano, the American, I'm out to you, especially health workers. Menka said, Media, it be our down for being an Indian who waits me a calm and not to trim. COVID, the union see, maybe a dangerous crime, Sam Ria said the echo ended. So, she had White House for the year in the last minute, you know, COVID. Now, COVID, and actually, for a long time, no, 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 no,
and come into men town Cassabia Wunya at any time tea and who subit answer on Saka or the empty Unio opportunity in a so wa. I'm saying David that can be brief, say be a who allergic reaction. And I saw a specific reason be a win on what they are any men. But more and more to say be a Columbia Presbyterian, you will get some doctors in Chrome, can never be brave, send your map blacks near there. But I saw when the media I back up and I am little to home. Who said Israel for one number is personal. It drew a bit of my coyaf so then I when you may my our walk a car home. And when you may say, eh. Moses, one year, and I said, I'm going to go back one year, start to. Ah, you are Ah, you did a year, a year, yes, you see, medical symbol, brazen serpent, I see, road, vision, mono. Now, all they had to do was look at it. When you're a missus or one car, what? Say, you know, and you were to call the advert, and you were soon possession. You do specifically into when you're a for some reason, you know, COVID are free, Antarctica. To say, say, one tactic as our South Pole, or air then a COVID to be drew her, a sour canoe, the one of the hottest areas, eh, into obey a beer, but when you're me and son, or the Bemaya for now, no dear, it be any Bible, or so for beyond country, but vaccine will be the answer. Now, David, now earlier on, no, or catch them say, I see a canvas, I see a canvas. Now, they know all kind of say, or say, if we want to open the church, say, yeah, you see, be a sorry in term, be a you move to do now, no, I be to me. Ah, it's okay for us in the young world. Now it's so true. But do you say now you have any arrangements? It means oh, young one, young cockerel, a phone first. Young one, one more, you are with diabetes first. Now I'm saying no. The best thing for us, the concept, no, yeah, herd immunity. It is a fear how you baha, you will yin yin ah, no yin yin ah, you call us as a group. So you may be one of the same amount of years, and you now feel yin yin ah, no, you see a whole. Inti, the middle man, you see no, now feel me cancer. Mummy and Mummy, and what, especially your health workers, no. Yeah, so for me, there are a lot of health workers. In the year April, and our spring, I said, yeah, yeah, can see here. In fact, Madame for Papa, I call a friend, and I'm an EJ, or kind of concerns in your Miss Mitchell, my dream. In two, so what would you be a also trust in Now, so I can concerns about the vaccine. No, so I can have it. In me and Kori Church members say, you know, you need a bit to me, you need a year, you need a year, you need a Thank you, everyone, for the comments. Um, yeah, so now we're open for questions. So any questions, okay. Yeah, David, I heard Uncle Amos has a question. So, so we'll have Uncle Amos ask the question first. I mean, she and I make us a virus now. I another asshole will lend in one compass on the China ballot man and I can come once. The and also a horse empty say. Say a war, sir, but see, I know it could tatia from that. You know, sir, virus now started from lending now. Yeah, that's that's a very good question. So for people who don't know, there's actually um, a new strain of the coronavirus, right? COVID-19 is a virus, right? It's the co coronavirus, right? Viruses are made out of genetic material, right? So any genetic material can change. You have your G, you have your T, you have your C, you have your A. Um, that's biology, very old stuff, but you don't need to understand that though. What you need to understand is things mutate, right? And once they mutate, they become different, they become stronger, they might become weaker. Uh, and when you sp you get the virus time to copy itself, copy itself, copy itself, it makes a mistake, right? It's not perfect. It's not like a it's not like a copy machine. It makes a little bit of mistakes, right? And so the virus made some mistakes, right? Some of the mistakes are good. Some of the mistakes are bad. This particular uh, mistake in the in this in this new case strain, it actually made the virus more what they call virulent. So basically, they found that this this new strain actually spreads faster than other strains of coronavirus around the world, right? So because this is all, this pandemic's all around the world, different communities have different strains, right? And this, this British one, they found that almost 60% of the Londoners who had it, I mean, 60% of the people who had coronavirus in London had this new strain. So Uncle Amos is asking us, what does this vaccine mean for this new strain? Well, I can tell you, it's likely that the vaccine will cover that strain um, because because the, the, the way they, they um, designed 
the vaccine um, was to have that that ACE receptor that we talked about, those 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 triangles that allow the cell to stick, I mean, allow the, the virus to stick onto the cell. That is likely gonna be stable, right? That is changing how, because that's, that's the thing that changes how the virus can enter the cell, right? But they tend to design the, the, the um, they tend to design the vaccine so that it can cover many strains, right? So they tested the, they tested the vaccine in, they tested it in the UK, they tested it in Germany, they tested it in South Africa, they tested it in Brazil, they tested it in America. Not because they just want different populations, different ethnicities, different races. They also want to test it against different strains of it, right? And efficacy held the same across, right? So it's very likely that the, the um, vaccine has actually protected people from this new strain, right? But that is what we think now, right? Things may change, right? But because the technology is so proven to work, they can definitely modify it in the future when people get vaccinated, maybe in the future, if they need to get a booster, they can definitely change it. But it's likely that they've already tested it in, in this new strain that is emerging, right? So China virus. <laughs> yeah. This, this is the <laughs> question. Can I ask you? Okay, Uncle Amos. Uh, Patrick, Doctor, we present. We have a few questions. I'm going to make a simplistic view of it. We say uh, British for no. I'm going to do more tests because I'm going means no. I'm going means no better tested to find us the air force. You say can be a can you Ghana can the same coronavirus na and can you be cancer? But I'm going means no better check it DNA in it code in this sequence. I'm say oh no no this is different. I'm going to do more difference no. But the Tia one say just as you say Nipa, you were. Uh, you were tum tum, you were uh, abrofo, you were mulatus, you were. It's a whole check here. You have to say virus is not so rare here. Now come to the income, I come because hey, now say I'm more affected mulatus, say I'm more black people. But the tia one is technology now or no? A bit me a boy me who says say that here. In Tibia, the what is a vaccine now? What is here? A bit me a cover. In Tibia, cover so eventually, you know they they will know. In the differences ever ye mu, even in Nipa Kran, or far even among black people, no, wait me and say, okay, say we say, say we difference, we difference, we the same thing so then your body be and viruses and also they come under that. Almost so it showed side differences. So until what mm -hmm. means no, what technology be you know, you will see differences. Yeah, now you can't do it. It's a virus, yeah, virus. Yeah, there, 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 you be able to say the echo. But almost so more means no, they are constantly seeking. New information. Brian so far, especially in can say it appears that the new strain will end Okay, but I say, I'm say, David, uh, you better mercy. Ever there was any in us, our information, am I? But my question is, uh, according to the study, uh, I want to find out if they were they tested or they studied on people who were uh, on ventilators and uh, they were uh, tested with the medication and it worked. Thank you. Okay, so that's a that's a very good question. The whole purpose of the vaccine is that you do not get to ventilators, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody who received the vaccine in the study did not get hospitalized, which means they did not go to ventilators, right? Mm -hmm. Vaccine is prevention, right? So that means if you did get COVID, you would not go to a ventilator, right? And so the people who actually vaccinated did not get to the ventilators but if you get to the ventilators they that is different than the actual vaccine that is a treatment that is a medication and that is a different um conversation itself so they use different things like convalescent plasma they have um steroids they have remdesivir they have other medications that they'll give you 
But at that point, if you're on the ventilator, it's too late, Absolutely. which is in, should encourage you to get vaccinated because you do not want to be in the ventilator, mm -hmm. which is very possible, God forbid, for somebody in the church to get on the ventilator because they got coronavirus. And so that's more reason to get vaccinated because everybody in the study, let me just repeat, who was vaccinated did not get hospitalized, which means they did not end up on a ventilator, which is a very big finding. You don't really get that like those kind of results in medicine that often. That means the technology is very good. And that was that was consistent across the Moderna trial and also consistent across the Pfizer trial. Two separate trials having the same finding makes it even more true. Thank you very much. But you are only me and nobody, we are no other way. Maybe I know me or question by my mom in comedian was the religious implication of a spreading false information. We are Christian, I'm one more pass as D4. For me, phones who are dealing with a bassa, we they buy, we they buy, we they buy, yes, we are a Luciferos, we are say, we are say, we are say. Na yes, you are Bible, trust him in a natural sec. I want somebody to me after you no moon, no moon any time. A basin always did any pan dear. What done a conduit? Any power must spread the false information. Also, what can be now on Tia see a cry? Any penny has any pen. It can be a woman best spread his information or one more bay. Now, also, once I can be a the message you cry, bro, say fuck off, move, be a no pun to me, fuck off, un tempo. Now we the only one tie na what sign spread. Oh my, I'm sure baby, yeah, na eh, who pa? So ni a David can't, you know. So me menda for the. Ni a ye nim se de or how be pray, you know. Iji ne nyami a sem no so. Eh, who me dani a dia no so. It me menda ni pa the only few who na all this information we cause no na. And they have brain, not even. And on any decay, my person make up. Yet to sum you, no, no. A a delay of the virus, no. Oh, the virus, yeah, yeah, can, yeah, can, yeah, 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 excited. Who has any air corner crying? Yeah, you move the crown. You be boy, a bay of March, and I said April, or baby, na. I just say, be a yenim sense, a timetable, no, so sign. In view of that, in Tino. Apart from crimes, a warrior was doing yes or be born. As a sister, we hold the fort. Nya ye ya, nya me ama ye ye in kunim di fon, yen tuaso, nya ye. Don't lose God. David Kase be said, COVID no. Last minute, yan and penny for ni nya ye be. Be be a coffoma, last minute, nya ye dangerous. Binti, mo ma ye mo ye ho bai, mo ma ye lose God, nya ye rin fin yen kase. Vaccine a bentisa as long as a vaccine a coson, as long as a womb will be no. Now, one moon young country, I say, a young head minute, you know. Wo, as I saw to me, ball who by men, so as I to me, bomb who by. Now, David, my question, and I may one is a now, make it is a color. A color has something to do with this, a young Africa, no. Uh, Nia nya vitamin D more Africa na vitamin D a preventive COVID no nya de. What do you have to say about that also? Yeah, that's a good question, Pastor. Um, there's a very interesting finding so far that only 40,000 people across Sub Saharan Africa have died from COVID. Now, remember, the US has a population of 330 million. Sub Saharan Africa has a population over a billion people and they only have 40,000 deaths. So a lot of people are like, why are Africans not dying of uh, COVID-19? I mean, they don't have a lot of ventilators. Like one New York City hospital has more ventilators than all of Ghana, which is, is, is surprising, right? But Ghana is doing way better than the United States. So why are Africans in Africa? Because that's not true. It doesn't hold for Africans that come here. Very different, very different situation. Why are they not dying? One of the, one of the um, they don't know for sure, but one of it, um, it tends to be that Africa is a very young continent. The average age, the median age in Africa is 19 years old, extremely young. It's the youngest continent in the world. 
And so we know from our studies that from coronavirus, the greatest risk factor is age. And so a lot of young people are not dying. And then you also talked about, um, and then we also in, in African, some people think that Africans, they have more infectious disease, right? Infectious disease are still a problem, right? Malaria, all these other yellow fever, all these other viruses are still a problem there, right? So some people think that their immune system is a little bit more ready, right? You know, it's, it's always fighting, right? So other people, we have to give credit to Africans where it's due. African governments take this pandemic very seriously. It may not seem like it from here, but they do a lot of testing. They do pool testing. They do a lot of risk mitigation. They close borders. They do what they need to do to stop it because they know what happens when you have an Ebola outbreak. They know what happens when you have HIV pandemic. They have a lot of death in the past from pandemics and so they take it very serious. Unlike this country, where this country, they don't take things seriously and everybody can do whatever they want. No one cares about anybody else. Africa and other places takes it differently. But Pastor said vitamin D. Vitamin D, I've actually seen some studies on YouTube. People are looking into it. Why does it, why people have greater vitamin D? You get a lot of your vitamin D from the sunlight that you have, right? And so our skin is more able to absorb sunlight. And so is vitamin D related to the pathophysiology? People don't know. People can't say for sure right now. So does that mean if you take vitamin D supplements right now, that will protect you from COVID? Probably not. Why? Because the virus is very aggressive. And if you have hypertension, you have diabetes, you're overweight, you have cancer, you have anything, it's likely that the virus can cause a real problem, especially if you're old. So if you are old, you get in advance in late 50s, 60s, 70s, I don't think the vitamin D will be enough to protect you from severe COVID-19 especially if you are in the ICU. Once you're in the ICU, it's a very different game. That's why we, in the medicine, once you're in the ICU, people who get up into ICU, if there was, wasn't an intervention of ventilators, they'll probably be dead. That's how serious it is. People are in ICU is the highest level of care. So when you get to that serious level, regular medicines are not even enough. You have to give them very high levels of steroids and all these different drugs. And so I would tell everybody to take the vaccine. I don't think vitamin D can be a replacement. It might come out that vitamin D might reduce your, your risk. If you look at these nutrients, it's usually on a small risk reduction, right? It's not major to the point where it's like a vaccine where it can reduce your risk. Because remember, this vaccine, no one has severe COVID-19. No one was in the hospital. That's a very important fact. But black people in Africa. Thank you. Brother, we are now Mr. Dan Kwaba. Okay. Uh, yeah, but that David, I say, oh, uh, Edisia or dear, my I think that the information is very timely. Uh, the Kakrebia meets me at Kanwo. Uh, I think so. He even mentioned about uh, Ghana for any African, how it be a disease known yet so bad over there. No, unfortunately, no, so you took on Baha. The levels of Ivan Dina in Yano, African, we don't get it here. Uh, it's one of the snowiest places in the U.S. And almost 80% of African-Americans, they all, don't, they all lack, like the vitamin D levels, no, they don't have it. And even before COVID, I remember I would go to the clinic and pregnant women, for instance, the doctor would always constantly say, you better check in now, their levels are low, you have to eat right, say so far, you supplements, you have to take it. And uh, a lot of studies about COVID by, you know, has shown that uh, vitamin D, you know, uh, it fights against inflammation. And uh, COVID, I uh, quite ha in the lungs, and yes, uh, it is causing inflammation, which is releasing cytokines everywhere. And see, vitamin D, you know, a boama, a suppressor, but it does not replace your vaccine. It does not replace the mask. It does not replace anything. And see, uh, that might be a bit of the difference at work. Mama and Sebia to tune for a ha, Omunia, you know, disease, no, Cassip compared to say Africa. African, we are a boy and we get it very well. But said I make a Syracuse, we are black, not a Syracuse. And we are both just about three months. Me buy another first supplement, but now me, I'm taking by the new supplement because we are now, you're losing no air so much. And T, again, it doesn't replace it, but it might contribute to it. And a lot of information about COVID, so it is still ongoing. About it. Eventually, you know, the answers are going to come. But in Chesabia, you need answer, no, and now nature say something bad is about to happen, like the different strain in Britain. Eventually, you know, all of these things will be figured out. Hello, Pacho. I'm a Kutini. 
as we mean, I'm a resume, so on at a be right. Anyway, um, let me pass on my answer. Yo, pass on a and run. No, now Thursday, me call what uh, coronavirus vaccine, the Pfizer. Um, yummy, I do mean to be be okay. I just felt a little tired. Um, yeah, on Thursday, and uh, so far, I haven't felt you know anything different except for my arm being sore that's like the flu vaccine and i'm a breastfeeding mother so far no there's no no changes in my baby and, you know now my person is saying crying say you know so so far i haven't seen any changes and it's actually it's not bad <laughs> you know the vaccine or your kids baby is less than the flu vaccine itself and you know say yeah now quietness here to me what the choice is clear it's either corona or the vaccine. Now, me heard the debilitated patients or more hospital are or more ban on how weak and debilitated they are now. It was a clear f- choice for me to go and take it because it's either that or get corona, end up in the sick bed that they are in, or bring it to my family. And you know, uh yeah, let's think let's think about the big picture when we're thinking about the corona. No, say name be brave so uh, you whatsapp especially people are sending me things constantly but let's take it with a grain of salt prayer research no senator david kayan thank you so much for bringing this information to us thank you thank you uh, 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 um, just uh, david i have two questions so far my first question is somewhere around September, I wasn't feeling well. So Mr. Bequin Boatin challenged me to go to see the doctor for COVID-19 test. I went. And unfortunately, when the results came, I have me to it. So I won't get COVID. My question is, am I going to am I still going to get a vaccine or not? My second question is, why is it that when this COVID came? It came so many African American in the United States than the white people. Why? Great, 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 great questions. Um, and thank you, the Kutin family, for saying your, your points, because those are amazing points. Um, so we know that black people here do not get enough sunlight. And we also know that um, people who actually get it protect themselves. And it's important because if you actually do get COVID-19, it's very debilitating. And so that's some, a reason to get it. And thank you for sharing that you actually got the vaccine. Well, the two questions, the, the two questions, if you, the first question, if you get, uh, if you had uh, COVID-19, should you get the vaccine? Yes. They, they studied that in people who previously had it. They had about eight, eight to 10,000 patients who previously had COVID-19, documented COVID-19, which means they confirmed it. They found that it it boosts their immunity. So you should definitely get it if you can. I, if you actually want to know that you have COVID-19 or had it in the past, the city offers free testing, antibody testing. I took the test and I actually had COVID-19 in the past. And I didn't even know. I was asymptomatic. I did not feel any sickness. Uh, But I will still get the vaccine when it's offered to me. So just because you had COVID, and this is for people who medically know that they had COVID. That means they ran a test and they... And they and it confirmed it. Not that you felt sick or you felt off. You, they know that you had COVID. It actually uh, boosts your immunity when you get the vaccine. So the vaccine will actually make you stronger and prevent you from getting it again. And you need to get both doses. That's I need to remind people. For the Pfizer one, it's three weeks, right? You get your first dose and then you get it, your 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 second dose after the third week, and then you're fully protected. And then for the Moderna, it's four weeks, right? And that's likely the one that regular people will get if you go to your regular um, general practitioner because that's one that is a- able to be in their freezers. That's four weeks, right? You get it and then it um, you get it again. And let me, um, let me warn people because in the future, this might be a case. Um, some countries will put requirements to travel, right? If you go to Ghana, they kind of require yellow fever vaccination, right? Once this vaccine is getting studied a little bit more, a lot of countries will say, you need to document your COVID immunization, right? So now imagine you're, you plan to go to Ghana, right? And it's June and it's, and it's June and you plan to go in July, right? And you haven't been vaccinated, right? You will have to wait four weeks plus seven days 
to prove that you're immune before you can travel. So a word to advise is sufficient. If you get vaccinated now rather than later, it'll save you the headache when you actually do decide to travel to a country that might put travel restrictions because they can't just let up all these Americans who possibly had COVID come to the country and they can't keep on testing everybody that comes in and making people quarantine. That's just not sustainable. So countries will start making policies and laws um, to require vaccination. Okay. The, uh, Let okay. Me thank you. This so you can ask. And then there is a, uh, uh, a lead up from oh, Mr. 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 that there's a misconception that hmm. COVID is a made up disease to kill blacks. And this is one of the reasons why many blacks are afraid to, to, to take the disease because in the past, uh, the US is known for creating issues like that. And, and, and that misconception is, what do you say about that, please? Previous, the, the second part of the question and what pastors are saying, why are black people dying in this country? Right. This is actually a research area that I study, health disparities, and also that's been well studied and people started to notice it's a real problem because of this pandemic. We known for a long time that black people had increased rates, or that means black people were more likely to get diabetes. Black people were more likely to be obese. Black people were more likely to have hypertension. Black people were more likely to suffer from a lot of stress. Black people were more likely to have all these health issues, right? These are known as health disparities, right? Because compared to white people, black people have a lot more disease, right? They're a lot less healthy. And is it because Black people are just not healthy in this, in this country? No, because if you look at Ghana and you look in other places, the hypertension is not even as high as it is over here, right? So a lot of it is the Western lifestyle, right? The living in America. A lot of it is the racism within the medical system for treating people. There's a lot of causes of that, but lar largely the cause is black people in this country because of systems of oppression, um, because of how we live here, right? Socialization, a lot of different issues. Black people have higher rates of disease, right? Hmm. If you live in Ghana, maybe you're eating one meal a day or two meals a day and you're, and you're actively working every day or you have a much less stressful lifestyle because the stress we're studying is called allostatic load. You can look it up. It's basically how much stress you take a day, right? That increases your cortisol level. That makes you feel all tense, right? We always talk about mental health, but a lot of us have a lot of stress in our lives. That's increasing our blood pressure. That's making us less sick. And so now you have coronavirus, right? Coronavirus takes advantage of people who have bad health, right? So you don't exercise, you don't eat, right? Coronavirus will take will take you out, right? And it, and it's just even age, right? And so the reason why Black people are dying is because coronavirus uh -huh. goes to their communities, right? Because Black people are on the front line. They're, they're janitors, they're healthcare workers, they're in the store, they're doing everything out there, right? They're not working at home, right? They're not the professionals who get to work at home. They're out there being exposed to the virus and then they're not as healthy. So that is what's leading we think to these health disparities. It's not genetics. Right. It's really not genetics, okay. right? It's not that we're we're not we're weaker or something like that. Probably mm -hmm. even more hardier. But it's the fact that we are not as healthy, right? All the primary care we talked about, all the health messages that we talk about. This is the result of that. So the coronavirus is exposing the health of Black people in a very significant way, and it's sad. So the people who should be getting vaccinated, if anything, if any population, any racial group that should get vaccinated are Black people. That includes Black people from this country, that includes Black people from Africa, that includes Black people um, from the Caribbean. All these Black people from around the world, they should be the ones that are trying to get vaccinated. And that's why they were making sure to get these communities, because we think that, oh, they're targeting us. Very opposite. They're trying to stop a lot of people, because a lot of people in the, in the new administration want these Black people to get access to this vaccine. And if Trump would have won, the opposite would have occurred, where they were not prioritizing black communities and they're probably giving the vaccine to white communities. Because if you've seen Vice, um, Vice President Mark, uh, Mike Pence, all these people in Congress, all these rich people have already got vaccinated. So it's going to be an issue. And then there's a before, before we go on, a question that I want to acknowledge. Uh -huh. I'm to Helen. 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 i i no, no, me can't say that chemistry. You have a board meeting, and you have a meeting at 5 o'clock. Oh, OK. You have a meeting at 5 o'clock, and you have a meeting at 5 o'clock. Okay, OK. David, you have to read it. You have to answer it, and you have to answer it. Yeah, so in the in the chat box, mm -hmm. say, um, asked, um, the percentage of the church that needs to be vaccinated to reach herd immunity so that we can reopen. Is that essentially suggesting a conference rule or a law? Very good question. So 
the public health researchers, they can tell, they do a lot of modeling, they do a lot of studies, how many people need to really get vaccinated to reach herd immunity. They do that for all the different diseases. They have the numbers now to accurately predict how many people get um, to need to get herd immunity. It's really between 70 to 90%, and it really should be 80 to 90%. This is what they recommended, right? The, go the federal government, the CDC, the NIH, all those, um, all those people that make recommendations that the state takes up and then they can determine when churches can open, right? So this is a decision that the, ultimately the state will determine. If the state says, okay, well, there's, there's not enough herd immunity there. It's not safe to open churches. The state will not allow it, right? So even before the Seventh-day Adventist church can even say, this is our policy, the state supersedes it, right? Because legally they're not allowed to open. But once, once the, once the uh, state government says, okay, this is, we are allowed church to make the decisions to open or not, use your own discretion, right? The conference will have certain guidelines and the conference is probably signaling, this will probably be our policy. I don't know if that's gonna be a hard and fast rule, but it's likely they're gonna follow, follow in line with what the public health officials say. So if people are not achieving those rates and people are not getting safely vaccinated, then we probably cannot open church, right? So there's, there's a way to get to herd immunity, right? People who are previously infected and people who get vaccinated. In New York, we're currently around 33%. We have to get to 75, 80, 90%. And so a lot more people have to take the vaccine or we have to let people get COVID, which is not an option. And so this is what the guidance is. First, it's probably gonna be the state making that um, decision. And then ultimately the church will say at the end, is it safe to open or not? And that will be up to discretion. But they're making the policy recommendation that it should be 70, 80%. Because the church has been in line with, in lock and step with the with the, um, the public health officials in America to say this is what our, the church recommends. Okay. Another question um, we have here um, from Uncle Atis, it says, which two vaccines are better to treat COVID-19? Great question. Both vaccines, similar technologies. You have Pfizer, you have Moderna, same results. Pfizer one, you get two shots. It's faster. Moderna, it's, 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 uh, Moderna is four weeks. The Pfizer is three weeks in between. It's your preference, but basically it's going to be whatever's available to you. And that's going to be 95%. It's the same. It's basically the same technology, right? And so uh, you really don't have a choice of which one you get, but just know that they're the same level of effectiveness, right? Basically 95% efficacy. Uh, and that means they're both good options. Okay. Uh, uh, Once you get vaccinated with one, you have to make sure you get the other. The, the, other one. the second dose has to be the same one you got for the first one. So if you got Pfizer in the beginning, get Pfizer in the second one. If you get Moderna in the beginning, get Moderna in the um, the second one. Okay. Stick within it. Whatever they offer you, they are the same, right? Because they're the same technology. Okay. Essentially, the difference is how you store them, right? So okay. your general practitioner will likely have the Moderna one. Hospitals and other government centers will probably have the Pfizer one, and the government will make strategies to distribute these things. Thank you very much. David, where you if you say a one time and I say every year and every Great question. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um also somebody made it, somebody made it in the comments. Um the vaccine is still a choice. No one can force you and no one will force you. The vaccine is very new and no one knows the side effects. That's not true. It is not that new, and it, they do know the side effects. I think I think I didn't share is that historically they studied the vaccine 90% of um, 90% of the, the cases, I mean, of, of, of a severe side effect or something bad happened within 40 to 50 days of traditional trials, right? For this study, they said, okay, we're gonna increase the safety to 60 days. We're gonna watch people at least 60 days to see if anything bad happens. So they waited even longer to see anything bad happen. Nothing bad happens, right? And so they have a lot of confidence in this vaccine, right? So. It's not true that no one knows the side effects. That's not true. They studied it. And now we have millions of people who have been vaccinated already. So they even are more confident, right? You don't, in, 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 in statistics and in medicine, you don't need to test millions of people to know how things work. You just need to really test thousands, tens of thousands. And then you kind of have a, a trend and you can see where this is going to go. So I, I, I'm pretty sure, given what they know now, it's not going to cause the side effects. And then Auntie Helena brought up a great point. Um, she said that, um, she said, uh, how often are we gonna get vaccinated? Right now, they do not know, right? Because you have to see it long enough to see how the antibodies levels stay stable, right? In people with natural infections, we've seen that it's been stable 
for at least six to nine months, right? From people who got it early on in the spring. And we see that they did, they did studies to show like, okay, it's been pretty stable, right? And so that might be suggested that this, maybe this vaccine might last maybe a year, maybe six months, right? Maybe, um, maybe it might last five years, maybe 10 years, we don't know yet. That it comes with time, right? Okay. But if we get to a herd immunity and we make the virus start to go to very low levels, very low levels of case, there'll be a point in time if everybody takes the vaccine that the virus can itself disappear. Um, and that's what the goal of vaccination comes. And that's why we have vaccination programs. So the more people who take it, the more likely that we have herd immunity and the less chance that we have of actually contracting the virus. But Auntie Lina makes a good point. We are not sure how often we're going to vaccinate. It look, it's definitely going to be longer than three and a half months because we, we know that it's going to We've seen that it's probably, we don't know if it's going to be six months, it's going to be a year. They're tracking it and will they'll have official guidance. We should probably know by next summer or, or okay. Uh, a little better than that. Okay. Thank you so much. Let me say, I'm going to 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 say, i am Mr. Dr. Fiani, Mr. Matt, David, or summarizing it quick. Okay. They take home message, you know, and with okay. the one second. Okay. okay, indeed. Well, we are not anti if you are sure my David, go. Okay, so just quick summary. Vaccine is very, very, very safe. Every doctor that I know, professors, community doctors, every type of doctor is excited about it. And there's a reason. Very rich people are paying for it. We haven't had a, a medicine or a vaccine like this in a long time. It'll likely go down as one of the greatest medicines of the century. It's that, it's that level of greatness. There's only one vaccine that's more effective than this. So this is why people are excited and people are, people are encouraging people to get it. It's very, very safe. Another thing, don't just consider yourself. Think about your elders. If you really care about them, if you don't want them to get sick, you would vaccinate to protect them. People, we have a lot of people who have diabetes and hypertension in this church. We have people with cancer. If you get, a, you, if you go to their house and you're not wearing a mask, which is a lot, a lot of transmissions happen, you could be potentially exposing somebody. And you know, 50% of people are asymptomatic. So you don't know if you have COVID-19. You can wake up and feel perfectly fine and you don't know. So you are taking a risk every single day. And the third reason is you have to get back to normal life. How are we gonna get back to normal life? You can't wear a mask for the rest of your life. You can't stay at home for the rest of your life. You have to get back to living a safe, normal life. So how do you do it? You vaccinate. And the last point is, this is the most critical point. If we're ever gonna have a safe opening of our church, if we're ever gonna go back to wearing our nice dresses and coming to church and singing and wearing a mask and eating together and having fellowship and being happy together, that is through vaccination, period. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Doctor, before I have a bump here, before I say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to die. 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 Why are you explaining more than you tell me? And why are you telling me that you can't be a kid? You can't be a kid. You can't be a kid. I'm not going to die. 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 I'